baptism, Norman Lee Miller was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all his sin. St. Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as he was raised from the dead,
thanks for your loving kindness shown to Norman and to all your servants, who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for Norman Miller is from Job chapter 19. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. O you, my friends, for the hand of God has touched me. Why do you, like God, pursue me? Why are you not satisfied with my flesh? Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and lead they were engraved in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. My heart faints within me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock as I am on the For you have been my refuge. It's a strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever. And let me take refuge under the shelter of your wings. For you, O oh God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Prolong the life of the king. May his fears endure to all generations. May he be enthroned forever before God. So will I ever sing praises to your name. As I perform my vows day after day. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and it will be forever. Amen. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. But, in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus Christ is the firstborn of the dead. To him be glory and power forever. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, after the 
Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. Behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen as he said. Come see the place where he lay. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
in Billy Grove, Illinois, to Norman and Rachel Miller. He was baptized into Christ December 17, 1933, at Emanuel Lutheran Church, Broadlands, Illinois. He was confirmed in the church March 21, 1948, also at Emanuel Lutheran Church. He married Shirley Berg August 7, 1960, at Emanuel Lutheran Church, Danville, Illinois. <coughs> He was a member of the Air Force. He was a master airport mechanic at Willard Airport. He was an usher at the assembly hall. He was a devoted husband, dad, and grandpa. He loved his antique tractor and had a passion for cars. He also had a special interest for aviation which developed from his many years spent at Willard Airport in addition to the time he served in the Air Force. He enjoyed nature, hunting, boating, and camping. Most of all, he loved to talk and share his experiences with others. He was a true example of faith and a lifelong member of Emanuel Lutheran Church in Broadlands, where he served his church in many ways over the years. The farm was a place that holds many memories for his family. They all enjoyed many Halloween bonfires and hay rack rides. Norman enjoyed the 4th of July every year, and you could count on, when it got dark, that he was setting off bottle rockets and other possible illegal and loud fireworks. <laughs> He enjoyed being in the Homer Parades for many years, driving his International Farball Super H and the Triumph TR4. When he moved to Monticello, he took advantage of the convenience of going to McDonald's and making a daily coffee run. <laughs> However, his church family of Broadlands was very important to him and he continued to drive 45 minutes every Sunday to church and on Wednesdays to Bible class as long as he could. He was special to his family in so many ways and they will treasure these memories forever. And they hope to live in a manner that brings pride, joy, and honor to him. He was summoned to await the resurrection on Good Friday, April 7th, 2023. He was preceded in death by his parents, Norman and Rachel, and his sister, Carol. He is survived by his wife, Shirley, his children, Kurt and Carolyn, his grandchildren, Ellen, Elena, and Caden, his great-grandchild, Marcel. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, dear family and friends of Norman Miller. I can confirm the family's testimony that Norman Miller regularly attended the Wednesday morning adult Bible class. The Wednesday morning adult Bible class has a long tradition. Once I am done talking about the Bible, the women sit at one table, the men sit at another table, and they drink coffee, eat donuts, and whatever other muffins or treats that somebody has brought in to eat that day. I do not know what they talk about at the women's table. At the men's table, we talk about hunting, Fishing, mechanics, carpentry, the weather, politics, and golf. We discuss those things. Sometimes, when the men folk talk about God, there is a second Bible study after the first one. Whenever Norman asked me a question at the men's table, the questions usually revolved around one of two things. Pastor, 
What year is that H. Farmel that you have? <laughs> oh, Norman, it's a 1949. And then he said, oh. And it was obvious that he knew more about it than I did. And the other thing that Norman would ask me about is the resurrection of the dead. This is why I selected today's epistle reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Norman was curious about the resurrection from the dead. He was curious not so much about his Lord's resurrection. He had grown up celebrating Easter. The questions that he had were about the general resurrection of the dead that would take place at the end of time. Unlike most people in Norman's generation, he did not fuss with me about it because it was different than what he learned growing up. He genuinely wanted to know what is the general resurrection of the dead and what will it be like. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15 begins, Christ is indeed raised from the dead. He is the first fruits of those who sleep. In order to understand that question, or in order to understand that statement, we're going to have to know what God is talking about when he talks about those who sleep. When our Lord was performing his earthly ministry, a man named Jairus came up to him. Jairus fell on his knees before the Lord. Jairus said to the Lord, please come lay your hands on my daughter. She is sick unto death. I want you to heal her. The Lord got up to go to the home of Jairus. He was delayed on the way when he healed the woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. By the time he arrived in the home of Jairus, Jairus' daughter had died. The Jewish mourners had already gathered in the home of Jairus to weep and lament for the child. When Jesus showed up, he told them, do not weep. She is not dead, only asleep. They laughed at our Lord because they knew she was dead. Jesus put them all outside. The only people he took with him were the father and mother of the child and Peter, James, and John. He went into the room where the girl's corpse was. He took her by the hand and said, little girl, I say to you, alive. And the little girl <coughs> sat up, and she began to talk. Jesus said, give her something to eat. Jesus told the mourners that the little girl was asleep because death is like sleep to him. He has the power to raise the dead. With that power, he makes death a thing that is temporary. A man goes to his bed, he falls asleep, he ceases from his activity until he gets up in the morning and resumes. We complete our lives, we sleep in death, and we cease our activity until the Lord Jesus Christ summons us back from the dead. So when it says that Jesus Christ is the first fruits of those who sleep, those who sleep are the dead. Jesus Christ is the first fruits of the dead. What does it mean when it calls Jesus the first fruits of the dead? In order to understand this, you will have to understand a commandment that God gave our fathers of old. God gave the commandment to our fathers of old that when they started the harvest, they were to take the first cuttings of the harvest, go to the place where God chose his name to dwell, and present it there as an offering, and only then could they complete <coughs> and eat the rest of the harvest. The only thing God said about when our fathers were supposed to do this was this, do it the day after the Sabbath. The day after the Sabbath is Sunday. For logistical reasons, by the time our Lord was on the scene, the Jews had organized the Festival of First Fruits to be the Sunday that took place during the Festival of Unleavened Bread, which began with the Passover. That means. 
that on the day when our Lord Jesus Christ rose from the dead, the Jews were all in the temple presenting their first fruits offerings to the Lord so that they could go and get the rest of the harvest. Jesus is the first fruits of them that sleep. He is the first out of the ground, guaranteeing that the rest will come out of the ground. This is what our Lord means when he says in John's Gospel, because I live, you shall live also. When do the dead rise? This was one of Norman's questions. So when do the dead rise? Norman, the dead rise at the end of time when our Lord Jesus Christ turns over the kingdom to God the Father. When Jesus ascended into heaven, the apostles stared into heaven until finally some angels came and asked the apostles, why are you staring into heaven? This Jesus whom you have seen go away into heaven will in the same way, will in the same way come back from heaven. Jesus himself promises that on the final day he will return riding on the cloud with power and great glory. He will send forth the holy angels. He will come with the trumpet call of God and the voice of the archangel. Jesus promises that on that day, those who are in their graves will hear his voice and they will come out. <coughs> some will arise unto everlasting life and some will arise unto everlasting condemnation. And how is it then that Norman Miller will arise unto life everlasting on the final day and not unto everlasting condemnation? It is that his sins are forgiven. His sins are forgiven for the sake of the death of Jesus Christ. This forgiveness is a forgiveness which Jesus imparted to him in his baptism, in the sacrament of the altar, and in the study of God's word. This is why Norman would drive 45 minutes from Monticello to Broadlands. It's for the forgiveness of sins so that he will rise from the dead on the last day and inherit everlasting life and avoid everlasting condemnation. In the forgiveness of his sins, Jesus Christ has made Norman righteous. He will rise unto life everlasting. It will happen on the last day. Norman, like many people, liked to ask me this question. Okay, when we rise from the dead, what will we look like? Okay, that's how Norman put it. The Bible puts it this way. When we rise from the dead, with what kind of body shall we become? What will we look like when we rise from the dead? The book of 1 Corinthians answers the question in this way. Right now, you and I and Norman bear the likeness of the man of dust, which is Adam. We bear the likeness of the man of dust in that we are sinners and we die and we return to the dust of the earth. God said to Adam, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the fruit of the tree about which I commanded you not to eat of it, cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat bread from the earth, and you will return to the dust. For dust you are, and to dust you shall return. Right now, you and I and Norman bear the image of the man of dust. We are like unto our father Adam. When Jesus raises us from the dead, the scriptures will declare that we will be like unto Christ. And how is it that Christ is raised from the dead? After our Lord Jesus Christ rose from the dead, he presented himself alive to his apostles. The apostles were startled and frightened. They thought they saw a ghost. Who could blame them? Jesus said, I am not a ghost. Touch me and see. I have flesh and bone. And then he asked them if they had anything there to eat. They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he ate in their presence. When we arise from the dead, we will arise flesh and bone. We will be able to do the things that we have so long enjoyed. We will be able to embrace and kiss and spend time together. This is what our Lord has promised. 
righteousness. And since our Lord is righteous in every way, and we will bear his likeness when we arise from the dead, we will be righteous. The book of Corinthians goes into some detail on this point. It talks about the bodies that we put into the ground. It says we put a body into the ground in weakness. When Jesus raises it, he will raise it in power. We put a body to the ground in dishonor because of sin. Jesus will raise it in glory because of his righteousness. We put a body into the ground perishable. It returns to the dust of the earth. Jesus will raise Norman imperishable. His body will no longer be subject to decay. That is why the book of Revelation says there will be no more mourning or crying or even pain. Because the old order of things has passed away. When we put a body into the ground, we put it into a, the ground a natural body. What the body. What the Bible means by that is a natural body is a body like heaven. Jesus will raise in a spiritual body. And what the Bible means by a spiritual body is not some ghostly body, but rather a body like unto our Lord Jesus Christ. That even as death no longer has mastery over him, he cannot die again, so also when we arise, death no longer has mastery over us. We cannot die. The next question from Norman Miller and others. Will we recognize each other at the resurrection of the dead? And the short answer I have for that is, yeah, you will. The book of 1 Corinthians goes into this elaborate explanation about how each of us will have our own kind of glory when we rise from the dead. The point of the discussion is this. The unique person that you are right now will be the same unique person that Jesus rises from the dead except without death and sin. Just as Peter and John, or Peter, James, and John recognized Moses and Elijah on the top of the mountain of transfiguration, even though Peter, James, and John had never met Moses and Elijah, so also we will recognize one another in the resurrection of the dead, and even people that we have not met. As Mary recognized her Lord outside the tomb and cried out for Mona, so also we will recognize one another in the resurrection of the dead and cry out our names and embrace one another and our Lord. These are the kinds of questions that Norman Miller asked me after Wednesday morning adult Bible classes. Rather than to talk to me about souls and spirits, rest assured his spirit is with Christ Jesus right now awaiting the resurrection. Norman would usually look at me and go, oh, and drink his coffee. That's faith. Now, if we're going to rise from the dead with bodies, then bodies need a place to live, right? And so God also promises us a new creation. When the dead arise, the old heaven and the old earth will melt in the heat of the fires of our Lord's judgment. Even the heavenly bodies will burn. All the works on the earth will be laid bare. And then Jesus will give us a new heaven and a new earth, the place where righteousness dwells. The new heaven and the new earth will be like the paradise in which our first parents lived when God created them. Humanity will once again resume our place in dominion over all the creation. We will once again work the earth and keep it. We will do so without toil slavery. We will do so in joy. It will be a new heaven and a new earth such that it will be familiar enough to us so that we can call it a new heaven and a new earth. But it will be a new heaven and a new earth such that everything that is wrong with this heaven and this earth will be taken away. We all know there's something wrong with the creation. And here I'm not just talking about politics. There's something wrong with the creation. And we know that there's something wrong with the creation because there are some days when the creation still works the way the creation is supposed to work. Norman was 
very proud of his turn. He would talk to me about it. Of course, when he talked mechanics, it was kind of like me talking to him about theology. I didn't understand everything he was telling me. But I did understand this. Pastor, I'd like to take you for a drive. Okay. Now, I'll tell you what, folks. Lots of people at our congregation have taken me for a drive. They've taken me for a drive to St. Louis or to Northwestern Hospital in Chicago so I can make a visit. Whenever anybody takes me for a drive from our congregation, they're always taking me to a place. Norman Miller is the only person who has ever invited me on a drive for the drive's sake. Just want to go for a drive. So we discussed our respective schedules, and my schedule's pretty full and busy, and his schedule's pretty full and busy, and finally we secured either a Tuesday or a Thursday afternoon. I don't remember which one it was. We had a two-hour opening where we were both available. And he says, Pastor, I'll be over. Five o'clock. Okay. So he pulls up in the parking lot over here in front of the parsonage in his truck, and I come out, and I fold myself into this car, okay? And Norman takes me for a drive. You know, I don't even remember where he took me. He just drove me around these Cali roads. Here's what I do remember. It was a beautiful day. The sky was blue. The clouds were that fluffy, kind of like a day like yesterday. A gentle breeze. Not a lot of bugs. Even if they were bugs, we were in a convertible, we could outrun them. <laughs> Norman talked to me about penny any little stuff about the sky or the litter or the car. And we drove around and admired the beauty of the creation. If it was the fall, the foliage was out. If it was the spring, the trees are blooming. I don't remember which, but I do remember that it was beautiful. And then, after 30 minutes of just driving around, Norman brought me back, because I had an appointment that night, and I was sad that the drive was over. Now, I want you to pay attention to the creation around you. I know it's broken. I know we get sick. I know we die. I know our faculties go. But in spite of the fact that the creation doesn't work right all the time, there are times when God allows us to see that it does. There are times when the weather is beautiful and the rain is just right. There are times when the flowers are lovely or the foliage is reaching its peak. There are those days when you know that it's time to put the top down and just go for a drive. I will be forever thankful to Norman Miller for taking me on that drive because in that drive, he showed me a glimpse of what life everlasting will be like. He showed me from the front seat of his triumph the new creation. In the name of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord, our God and Father, who raised Jesus from the dead. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son, may be raised to immortality and incorruption, to be seated with him at your heavenly 
heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give to the family of Norman and to all who mourn comfort in their grief and a sure confidence in your loving care, that, casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to the bereaved, that within the communion of your church, they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the assurance of a holy and certain hope, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love who have departed in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, we pray in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Look graciously upon those who mourn the death of a beloved husband and father, and bring them to a joyous and blessed reunion in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Receive our thanks for Norman and for all the blessings you bestowed on him in this earthly life. Bring us at last to our heavenly home, that with him we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. Whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Christ, 
your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord.